Hello and welcome to Sacred Spaces. It's Merritt and Jennifer here from separate locations, but united by heart. That's right. That's right. United in love and in surrender to yes. what is today, what is going on right. right now. Today we're talking about Ishwarma Pran Pranidhamma, which means surrender to the Supreme. Surrender. Oh, isn't that timely? To the supreme. It is very timely. I have been, as I've been reflecting and meditating on this, I, it, it has been timely because there are so many layers of this surrendering happening on, you know, with everybody that I know. And, you know, it, it's, it's about surrendering to the ego. And I think that's really important right now because there is so much fear vibrations happening. There's a lot of division and how people feel. And so for me, as I reflected upon that, it was a lot of it was about just surrendering to grace and surrendering to, of course we have to have our ego, right? So we can like make sure we're doing things and, <clears throat> but, but surrendering to, even our ideas and our personhood are um, of, of what we are and what we think we should be doing on our mats and in our meditation and letting that lead us more. The, before we go on, this is number five of the Niyamas, right? This is our last it is, it is, Niyama. It's Niyama. It's also a one limb path of yoga surrender in of itself is the the root and foundation of all yogic practices be it in your heart in your service and what you bring to the mat so i thought that was really cool i agree i agree so we've gotten to spend the last couple of months in a mini series of sorts covering the first two limbs of yoga the yamas and the niyamas and this is kind of wrapping it up right like this mm -hmm. is our our last there's five each five yamas and five niyamas and the niyamas are things that we want to cultivate more of i think that's the way that you've always uh, phrased it and i love it the niyamas we want to surrender more um, we want to practice more contentment that's another one of the santosha and so over the last few it's been a couple months, hasn't it? Because there's 10. It has, be because we did a couple of overviews and, you know, we've gone through each one and studied them. And it has been a amazing journey. I was considering whether or not we would want to do another next week, do a final kind of overview of our journey. I thought that might be interesting. But yeah, I agree. So, I think it would be. So we have every week put out one of these videos and it has been a profound journey and we're very grateful to those of you who have shared shared this with us for sure i think it's fitting that the last niyama is hitting us right now when in a very uncomfortable position but also kind of at the end of this little journey that we've done so we've been plowing through uh, working hard to learn more about the yamas and the niyamas, these first two limbs of yoga, learn more about ourselves. And then we get to this, our final resting, final resting pose, our Shavasana. And here it is, it's surrender. Yes, I thought about Savasana a lot because that is when you do your final surrender, but there's also a surrendering into each pose, moving into that journey towards Savasana and then the savasana is where we really just bring it all back in and surrender completely. Hopefully, that's the goal. And and it's always very funny to me when I was uh, first starting with yoga. I in the power yoga, I would just be so tired during the shavasana. I had no trouble surrendering, none right. whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then as your practice matures or your practice changes with time or you know life gets in the way the shavasana I, I never understood why teachers would say oh my gosh shavasana is the hardest pose shavasana is the corpse pose the final resting pose when you're on your back completely exposed right because you're just laying there palms up 
completely vulnerable and you have to, the goal is to let go and to surrender. And it wasn't until further along in my practice. And I even struggle with Shavasana to this day, because like you, like, like you as a listener, you probably struggle with day to day crap. I got to go do the laundry. Now I have to do the dishes. Oh, I've got to pay these bills or whatever. And then why am I sitting here in Shavasana for Mm -hmm. 60 seconds, seven minutes, you know? And so I think it's kind of fitting. We're stopping here. But those things that you're thinking about that you need to do, like the laundry and all those things, those are things of, like I was saying, your personhood, your identity. Mm-hmm. And the whole idea of this is to surrender to all of that, to surrender to all of those things and all of those identities and labels and egos and, oh, I've got to get this done, completely surrendering to the divine and or to the supreme as it, you know, surrender to the supreme. Um, so. I had, oh, so it's kind of like, for me, I was kind of comparing it in my mind to when you're hiking and you're carrying a backpack and, you know, you're trying to get somewhere and then you finally get there and you're able to put that down and breathe and just be who you are without all those labels and identities and activities that we need to complete. It doesn't mean you don't do those things, but there's even while you do those things, there's this surrendering. Interesting that the, I like that. I like that version of surrender. We are also, we have been reading the Yamas and the Niyamas. I don't know if that's coming out the right way by Deborah Adele. And when she talks about surrender, Ishvara Pranidana, good job. You said that better than I could. She talked about it's not just the surrendering like into the mat for Shavasana, but it's also surrendering to it's it's an, an, a presupposition because you said it's surrendering to the divine that you believe that there's something bigger, something greater, right? Some yeah. there's a purpose for you and for your life, and you're surrendering to that. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's always Shavasana. And she gave she cited these people martyrs. Um, people that gave their life for their purpose. They surrendered to their purpose as compared to shying away because it was hard and rising almost. They surrendered to the times that were kind of like us now. There's nothing we can do about this virus. And we are doing the best that we can as a human race. You as a healer, me as a uh, studio uh, owner, director, we're, we're doing, we are surrendering to the environment that is mm-hmm. with the belief that there's something better at hand. There's something that's good that's going to come out of this. And we do the best that we can given the situation. We're not fighting against it. And that's right. what spoke to me. That's what spoke to me because I'm not going to lie. I was fighting against the environment that is this COVID-19 crisis, what we're currently dealing with. I fought against it for a couple of weeks and it was a struggle and I was losing it. I was losing the struggle. And then as soon as I surrendered, practiced this Niyama, right. there, there, it came about with peace. Do we still have right. COVID-19? Yes. Is my studio still closed? Yes. Did we get hit by a tornado, which made it be closed even longer? Yes. But like surrendering to these, to these, situations and not fighting it what has it done it's it's birthed other things and it's given me the opportunity to to lead in a way i never thought possible so i thought that was a beautiful representation that that is beautiful and when you're able to do this surrendering there's a patanjali quote that speaks of this but I don't know it by heart, but when you are able to surrender in this way, then we as with our egos have no concept of with our frail, you know, ideas and beliefs and ego, just the power that the surrender has to send forth idea um, energies and elements and you know, all these forces that are out there to help us 
if we can do the surrendering and right. because yeah because we we can't grasp what all that is that energetic network that's out there and you know i don't want to sound woo woo -y or supernatural it's it's very true you reap what you sow what you put out in the universe comes back and the more that we can do this this surrendering the more powerful the forces that can come to be come to be because our vibration matches that and so you know that's an outcome of surrender and you're not looking at that the idea is to not even look at that but just to simply surrender to this this divine state I love that, especially because we are matching the vibration. We, we are able to match the vibration that we want to have, and to, to use kind of the words that you have. And it's almost like, did you ever read the book, The Secret? Um, yeah, I did. The, and, Anything and like that that comes out, if a lot of my clients are reading it, I have to read it. So I kind of know what they're talking about. It, it, it's in, you know, that's a very secular way of looking at it. Then there's the religious view of the name it and claim it that very charismatic it's, it's all, it's in all sorts of different philosophies of putting out that, which you would like to have. So if you are putting out these negative things, then that's what happens. But something that she mentioned in the book, it also is, it's like a curtailing of this victimhood. Um, and I, I feel like, especially now that we're fighting with the, the fighting. See, I'm even using those words. Now that we are in the midst of this COVID crisis where there's so much fear and uncertainty, the, the, we have this option, we have this ability to sit down here and hover in it and be the victim of it. Uh, it would be very easy for me as a business owner to be like, oh, the government closed me down. I guess I just don't have an option. Or you surrender to it. What are my other options? How can I continue to lead? And that to me was very powerful, especially, and I hope that the, the listeners can, can maybe recognize the difference of this is what is right now, but it doesn't have to be what will always be. What are, what are the opportunities in this right now? Exactly. And, exactly. and not succumb to the look at what happened to me. This is happening to everybody. And what yeah, can we yes. do? in this moment to propagate the raising of the vibration, if you will, to propagate yeah. what we want to happen in our life. Cause the, even in the midst of this struggle, there's positive out there. There's Absolutely. so, much beauty, and there's so there. much beauty and there's, there's so much grace. You see it every single day. And I did want to note that one thing that struck me about the secret, I think they missed, that the secret missed is that you don't manifest in your life what you want. You manifest in your life what you are. It's what you are. And so through this surrendering that we're talking about, when you can reconnect and surrender to that divine nature, which is the root of all yoga, is it's even in a pose, it's, it's going to that. Uh, everything you do with your body reflects your, your being. And so what we are is that grace, is that bliss. And when we can surrender to that, instead of collapsing ourselves into the fear, into the victimhood, into the ego, then these forces that are out there help move move things doesn't mean we're not going to have pandemics it doesn't mean we're not going to have tornadoes but we're able to move more from that sacred space no pun intended <laughs> i love the pun if it was intended the in the beauty the beauty of it is is it's the the action word that you chose move into the sacred space it's not wallow it's not stay it's not it's being and it's an action even in shavasana when you are surrendering that's still an action because there's forces at nature there's forces in your mind that are like i gotta do this i gotta do this and yes. it's an action word surrender is an action word it's not uh 
do nothing word. And I, I no, love exactly, this. exactly. And, and, but it can, it can go, you know, we don't, we want to make sure we take it to the positive. At least that's what I want. I want to make sure that I'm doing something that will enhance the, the current situation and into the future. And that's how I look at it at least. Well, and I think that's a great point. I like the way you put that because if I think about a yoga class, just using that as an example, you know, there's parts of it that are hard. There's parts of it where I'm trying. There's parts of it where I almost feel like I'm forcing. And then when we get to the Savasana, I move into a place of forgiveness and gratitude and clarity because I'm finally able to just stop the trying. And like I said, put down that backpack and be at home. And of course the whole journey of this is to try to do that throughout the whole practice um, because there's a surrendering in each pose. And the more we fight that, the, the less it's going to come. Agreed. Agreed. And that, that can be taken both on the mat and off the mat. Exactly. And surrendering to the moment that it is, accepting it, and what can I learn from it? How can I make it better? How can, what am I here to, to, to do is a surrender versus like, I'm not going to deal with this. this is stupid. The men can be. Well, and we talked about this a little bit last week. We, we kind of took a break from this and talked about, our experiences, you know, throughout this whole situation. And one of the things that we touched on was that you also have to be with that fear, be with that pain, be with that anger in order to get to the place of surrender in order. Like it's not about being present and only focusing on bliss and gratitude and of course that's where we want to be but we have these things happening right now and we have to process them and be present with those too mm -hmm. and so it's even surrendering with those things or maybe I that's agree. what it's really all about and just allowing that state of grace to come in and change you. It's interesting that you brought that up because last night my husband and I were talking um, and I was telling him that this last, what is it, six, seven weeks have been such a roller coaster. And I've been kind of trying to look back and see the maturation, if you will, of my own development. And the first week of the close down, probably, and then the week leading up to it, I was just chaos and modified, right? The next, the second week into it, I got help. My, I had a babysitter. I got somebody to help me. And I started creating space, like recognizing mm -hmm. that there was this happening and I couldn't fight against it. How could I be here and manage it? And as soon mm -hmm. as I did that, in, it didn't change the fact that the studio was still closed. It didn't change right. the fact that I couldn't do what I had thought was my calling the way that I'd always thought to do it. It didn't change any of that. But once I surrendered to it, gave myself space, got mm -hmm. the help that I needed, suddenly these divine <laughs> brain cells that we had, they were working. You know, I wasn't just turn fire, fire, fire. It was like, we could do this and we could, my natural state is ideas nonstop. My natural right. state is that way. And, and it wasn't until I surrendered to that, that all of these ideas and they were beautiful ideas. And then mm -hmm. I got used to it. Then we had the tornado and I was react, 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 react. And sure. now we're, we're here on the other side of it. And we're now getting to this. Sorry, place. Can you hear that? I'm sorry if you can. There, there must be an accident around. The, I'm in the same neighborhood as you, so of course <laughs> I can hear it. I'm making sure. I was like, I'm sorry. I just my next door, are... Jennifer. <laughs> like a stone's throw away. Yeah. So it, it was my husband and I were talking about it. It was like you know, for that first, it only took me one week after the tornado. It took me two and a half weeks after the COVID crisis. But I'm here now, and this yes. acceptance. Right. And I'm going to call that growth crisis. There were just so many unknowns. And right when you thought you had, cause I was kind of going through that with you. I was still there in the beginning and advising you talking through things. 
um, it was like once we got one thing figured out, the next thing had to be figured out. And, you know, there was a lot of, you know, fear coming to us from members about how to work with the studio. But then, you know, like you say, you, you started the online stuff and we talked about this last week too. You know, it was almost like divine intervention that you started on that when you did and kind of had worked out a lot of the kinks. I know with anything new, there's kinks that, you know, you have to figure out as you go. But I mean, I just feel like that's, that was a miracle. I agree. I, but the, the miracle was surrendering to it. Like, this is what's going to happen. Right. This is happening. Right. This, and once I surrendered to it, that was when the energy flowed in the direction that it needed to, which is kind of getting us back to the point and the energy flow. That's when I allowed the miracle to happen. And, and right. that's when every, all the pieces fell to fell together, if you will. And, and that's kind of the point driving but the point home with this. All of the, you had to, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to oh, speak okay. over you. You had to go through all of those experiences and, uh, and all of those feelings in order mm -hmm. to get to the surrender. Yep. So I don't want anybody to hear us saying that, you know, if, you know, if you get caught up in fear, if you get caught up in ego drama, that you can't surrender. We all cycle and it's the surrendering that brings in, you know, that magic point. And again, when I say magic, I don't mean anything supernatural. I'm talking about these energies that are here and that come from us and through us and from our environment. And I really watched you do that because I remember we had a conversation about it and I said, God has never left you, never, never abandoned you. And mm -hmm. you know, you got to trust, you got to trust, but you weren't there yet, you know? And until you went through all those things, you couldn't have gotten to that sweet spot, that magic spot right. where inspiration and ideas started flowing. Yep. Cause you can have all kinds of ideas and inspirations, but, you know, some, somebody's got to move that. You can't just sit there and it's going to happen. Right. <laughs> yep. Exactly. And that goes um, back to the, the, the work of surrender that goes back to the work of yes. surrender because it is, it is work. So I think I it was like a, taking us on a wild goose chase today. I, I love the wild goose chase and I, and I love that we're ending this mini series surrendering. It's, it's, it's been a, a beautiful, scary, I really don't want to do this journey ever, ever, ever. I'd like to restudy the yamas and the niyamas, but maybe not in this current environment. <laughs> right. Well, I think we should do this again in a few months from everything that we've gone through and walk in the journey, revisit it and go through them again. And a lot of the people on YouTube that I've watched, you can tell that they do their topics on a year rotation because you can see several of them. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting to me as I've watched some of the, I've watched some yogis during this and that's part of, been a part of how I studied how much when you run across one that they've done two years earlier, how much they've evolved and expanded and really applied those things to their lives. So I definitely think we should revisit. I would again. love to. I, I think it'd be a, a good idea to do it. And I, and I think it'll be fun to kind of make this be an Ebenezer stone, if you will, or uh, uh, what is what we did these in fourth grade. Like you put all of these ideas into a box and you don't open time capsule. And this is a, th these are just recorded time capsules yeah, exactly. of our experience. And we get to come back and, and be like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe she wore that lipstick or I can't believe she wore that shirt, you know, and, no, and hopefully to people will not be coming at us from that place. But <laughs> I would come at myself um, from that place. <laughs> I, well, I do too. I do too. But maybe we won't when we revisit these. Maybe we will have okay. transcended that. <laughs> would that, be? that would be very cool. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Yeah definitely been a gift and we're going to also be teaching the yamas and the yamas in the 300 hour not necessarily the online well y'all may be but the, the yep. next one we have at the studio we'll be having the yamas and the yamas yeah i hope i'm going we, to get to help teach that yeah we are we're going to be diving deep um in different workshops in we have we the thrive yoga and wellness is a ysep yoga uh, alliance 
continuing education provider. So that means we are able to provide workshops, classes in various um, yoga related topics, and this is one of them. And I intend on continuing to have you come in as experts, um, other, other experts in the areas, and, and just explore these concepts and these ideas in a more detailed way. So always keep in, um, keep in touch with us. Make sure you come to our website, thriveyogaandwellness.com. We'll give you, uh, if you come down to the bottom of the homepage, sign up, you'll get a, a freebie yoga video, and then you'll get to stay in touch with us. So you'll get to know when the next workshops are, when the next future trainings are. Hopefully now that we're kind of on the tail end of this crisis, you'll get to know when Merritt and I put together our retreat. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing a meditation I can't retreat. Wait for that. Yes. I know I'm excited. I mean, we've missed spring, but that's okay. Well, Hopefully by the fall. And you can find me at theenergycenter.com. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. I do integrated energy medicine sessions. And during this time, I'm offering all kinds of services that you can do through video or phone sessions. So this has been another edition of Sacred Spaces. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so Namaste. much. We can't wait to see you. Namaste. Bye. Amen.